We're going to take a look at the hand. We'll go through all the features and the muscles here. We'll start on the palm side of the hand. So we're just going to hold the thumb out like this. And we look in this region here. The first thing you're going to notice is this piece of connective tissue in the middle that we're outlining here. This is called the palmar aponeurosis. Uh, once you find that palmar aponeurosis, you can see that we can take this and reflect it down. It's going to uncover some other things underneath. Put that back in place. And coming off of the medial side of the palmar aponeurosis, we have a muscle right there, which is called palmaris brevis. So it goes from the aponeurosis, and then you can see that palmaris brevis, if we kind of flip this over, would lay on top of these muscles over here, which go out to the little finger on that side. So we got palmaris brevis right there. Its counterpart would be one we've identified before, which is palmaris longus down here. So this and that both attach to that palmar aponeurosis. Uh, we're going to just take palmaris brevis and move it out of the way like that. And once we do that, we uncover this area here, this area over there. Those are eminences. The one going up towards the thumb here is the thenar eminence there. And on the other side, we have the hypothenar eminence. So we have muscles located in each one of the eminences. And they're going to be mirror images of each other. So we're going to have three muscles going over here towards the thumb. And we're going to have three muscles going over here towards the little finger. Uh, so those three are going to be, we're going to have one here, two there, third one here. You can also see it coming out this side a little bit too. So again, you got one, two here, three there. Same ones on the other side here. You're going to have one muscle, kind of move that one out a little bit. There's one, there's two. We'll kind of pick that up just a touch. And then you can see the third one here. So you got one, two, three. So we correspond this one to this one, this one to that one, and then this one, that third one to this one. And they're going to be abductor pollicis brevis. So this one's going to move the thumb out a little bit. Right next to it, you're going to have flexor pollicis brevis. And then that third one on this side would be opponens pollicis. If we go over to the other side, it's a mirror image. Abductor digiti minimi would be this one. Flexor digiti minimi, this one. And then down there, opponens digiti minimi. So those would be the muscles that are located in the eminences. If we want to see any other muscles here, we're going to have to take the palmar aponeurosis and reflect it down like this. And once we do that, we're going to expose these tendons here. So we see here, 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 and there. Those are the tendons for the flexor digitorum muscles that are located down in the forearm. So we had flexor digitorum superficialis and profundus coming down here. Uh, we can see pretty nicely now the difference between the tendons here. I'm holding up the tendon for flexor digitorum superficialis. There's the tendon for flexor digitorum profundus. Notice how this is a deeper one that emerges from in between superficialis there. So this one goes up to the distal phalange of each one of your fingers. This one goes up to the middle phalange. So you get a nice picture of that there. Now, once you identify those tendons, we want to find muscles that are located on the thumb side of each one of the tendons. So we go to the first tendon, we have a muscle. Go to the second tendon, if we move this over a little bit, got a muscle there. Third tendon, we're going to move that vasculature, muscle. And then fourth tendon right there, tendon, muscle. These are your lumbricals. And we have a first lumbrical, second lumbrical, third lumbrical, fourth lumbrical there. All right, so you got all those. Uh, lumbricals are going to, if my hand is, my fingers are extended and I go from extension to hyperextension, like that, and ignore what's happening in my thumb, just to digits two through five, like that, right? Uh, and when I do that, my metacarpals flex and my phalanges hyperextend, like that. And that's what the lumbricals will do in this area. Uh, next muscle you'd want to find on this side would be in between the thumb and the index finger. So we kind of open this up a little bit here. So this muscle that we're seeing in this area, that's going to be adductor pollicis. And that one is going to pull the thumb towards the other fingers 
like that. So we get that one there. Uh, and then the last set of muscles you would find on this side would be your palmar interosseous muscles. Now they're going to be down deep underneath of all these tendons and underneath of the lumbricle muscles. So we're not going to move them out of the way right now, but they would be in between the metacarpals underneath of these things. So we're going to have three palmar interosseous muscles. And if we have palmar interosseous, then we're going to have ones on the opposite side of the hand. We're going to flip the hand over like this, and we would have dorsal interosseous muscles. So on this side, those are the only muscles we're going to have. And we can see a really nice example of the first one here. Here's that second metatarsal, the first metatarsals over here, and this muscle right in between that I'm kind of lifting up there. That's your first dorsal interosseous muscle. Then we move over here, and if we spread apart the tendons here, and these tendons would be for your extensor digitorum muscles, right? If we move those tendons apart, you can see the second dorsal interosseus here. If we open this up right there, there's the third dorsal interosseus, and then we come over here, and there's the fourth dorsal interosseus muscle. So you just need to move some of these extensor digitorum tendons one way or another, and you'll be able to find those there. Once you identify the muscles in the hand, then we can identify a little bit more of the connective tissue. So we can see here this band of connective tissue that is going to cover all these tendons that are crossing the posterior side of the wrist. This is going to be called the extensor retinaculum. And that's just what holds the tendons down in this area. On the other side, we're going to have a flexor retinaculum. Now here, again, we can see the, we can see the palmar aponeurosis right here. The flexor retinaculum is going side to side right here underneath of the uh, palmar aponeurosis. So it's going to form the roof of the carpal tunnel. So we can take a probe and we can push it up. And we should be able to get it through the carpal tunnel here, let's see. Like this, there we go, right here. Right now the probe is going through the carpal tunnel and it's going underneath of this band of connective tissue here, which will be the flexor retinaculum. And again, it's deep to the palmar aponeurosis. So we're gonna move over to the other hand where I have this open so we can actually see the things that are traveling through the carpal tunnel. All right, so if we move over to the anterior side, this is the other hand now. Um, we can see that uh, palmar aponeurosis again. We can see palmaris brevis here. Now, if we move palmaris brevis over like this, and then we take this and open it up here. You can see right here is a cut section here, and you can see the other side of that same thing right along here. So from here to right there, that's the flexor retinaculum. So it's a band of connective tissue that would have covered over this area. That means everything we're seeing here are things that would be inside the carpal tunnel. So first thing we would see is this here, that's your median nerve, you can see that coming through. Then you would have all your tendons here for the flexor digitorum superficialis muscle. And if we go over a little further right here, you'd have your tendon for flexor pollicis longus. And then if we move this out of the way, underneath of all that stuff, and we got a little bit of connective tissue still in here, but down in here, these tendons down in this area would be for uh, flexor digitorum profundus. All right, so you have profundus going through there. We have superficialis going through there. We have flexor pollicis longus, and we have the median nerve. All those things would be inside of the carpal tunnel and covered by the flexor retinaculum that we can see right there.